again this beautiful Wednesday morning. Yes, indeed. Things are about to get hot in here. Okay, is it raining? Is it raining? It's kind of chilly, right, outside? It's probably drizzling a few places. But hey, we're about to get started right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, and as always, it's going to be a three-hour affair. Thank you for tuning in uh, this morning. We've got Mary in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking really pretty. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm pretty. Oh, <laughs> You make me giggle. Uh, but uh, it's great to see you, Mary. It's great mm. to see you. Uh, great to see you too. Good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Good, 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 good. It's midweek. Titi, I love the combination, the green, green thing going on. Like, as the phone do, green, green. Thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. Green, green. green I like green. that. Uh, green hair, green dress. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to mix it up. Just trying to make it work. You look yeah. lovely. <laughs> A big shout out to For Last Place for this amazing wig, by the way. Fantastic thank stuff. Thank you. Yeah. You we... have to tell them it was a wig, right? Yeah, well, it's not my real hair. I wouldn't dye my hair green. I'm not okay. that crazy yet. Not yet. <laughs> but <laughs> we have so much in store for you hopefully your week is shaping up nicely because ours is yeah mm. grab a cup of uh agbo wow. or whatever else that you guys Yo have in the morning there's some people who try to detox like every single morning oh my you just God. drink something bitter <laughs> did you say agbo? well it is coffee is kind of you know let's yeah coffee is a type of agbo it's it is you know yeah it's brewed right it's it's brew mm. uh, so for some people the uh, the mix that they have is mm. a mixture of roots and mm. leaves okay. and things like that and tea is leaves yeah right? so, tea, yeah. Is, tea is actually agbo so yeah so hey my name is titi lyle <laughs> so. and i'm yomi Ope. we're streaming live right now <laughs> on tvc and tv and on facebook check us out at TVC Connect. Yes, indeed. Those comments on social media, so far so good. There haven't been any mean ones yet. Thank you very much for that. Uh, nobody has called me Incredible Hulk yet, which is nice. It's fine. Uh, hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you can download our mobile app on the Android and iOS stores. Uh, use, of course, you can watch us when you do that. Anywhere in the world, yeah. once you download that app, you type um, TVC Connect yes, on your uh, Play Store and you can check us out right there. We have music as always starting us off on the show. We have Obzi Ace and uh, Obzi Ace is going to be performing for us very soon. Yeah, and now the musical performance is going to be coming your way from R&B singer King T-Bams. <laughs> We recently started a home makeover segment and we have Tunde Shanu, the handyman, joining us from the exclusive lifestyle. Now he's going to be talking about choosing the right color for your bedroom. Mm. White. Really? White? White. For the bedroom, really? Well, I don't know. Yeah, and on relationship, we have Damilola Oluwatoimbo discussing releasing baggage and healing from hurt. Hmm. We're going to be asking dams today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask dams. Blackface has been all over the news over the release of his own version of African Queen. Oh, boy. And we'll be having him right here for a chat on the show later on. Yeah, we've got a few questions for that, man. <laughs> you shouldn't. Uh, but lastly, we have... Someone interesting joining us. We have actor, award-winning filmmaker Baj Adibule joining us later on the show. All right, what's wrong? Dami. Easy about this one. <laughs> Shagwa, I'm serious. Am I laughing at you? I'm uh, laughing beside you. <laughs> All right, it's Wednesday, y'all. Uh, yeah, so yeah, today's yeah. one of the days where you, you wake up hungry. Mm-hmm. That happened to so me too. Both of you. Yeah, I and I just, I just, really I just felt food. like, oh, man. <laughs> what are you going to eat? <laughs> some pounded yam will do very <laughs> Pounded yam. Some justice right now. <laughs> but it's, yeah. It's really uh, early in the morning, so hard to get food, at least cooked food, at the time we wake up. You <laughs> oh, know? really? Yeah. Like, I, I, I cook every morning. Uh, yeah, so you, once you're not the one doing the cooking, fine. You know, or once you're the one doing the cooking, fine. But actually, generally, 
everywhere in the world. It's so hard to get food at this like time really of the day. Like really early in the morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and what, you know what, talking about food, uh, food security, uh, we were talking a bit earlier on in the makeup room mm. about um, this issue of farming. So there was a tweet that I read, I can't quote it right now, but uh, it was talking about the fact that farming is mostly about the technology and the machines right now in 2019, mm -hmm. as opposed to actually creating jobs. Mm. So, uh, Meriden, you know, you told me that, look, in Nigeria, it's still about the jobs. But there were some other things you mentioned yeah. about the journey from farm to consumer mm -hmm. that I hadn't actually thought about. Mm. Yeah. So, so many things are expensive because of middlemen. Mm. Uh, yes, it applies to almost every industry, mm. yeah. So when you're buying things directly from a company, mm. yeah. it's um, a lot more cheaper. Mm. But it's not as ridiculously priced as farm uh, produce. Mm. You find a farmer sell, just like the example I gave, mm. a farmer might sell something for one naira, mm. the middleman buys it, uh, you know, and then uh, decides to sell it to the market uh, women for say, or market men as the case may be, uh, for say 10 or 15 naira. Mm. You already see uh, the disparity there. Yeah. And the market women or men, or let me just say, uh, the trader gets this produce and the process of transporting it from the farm where, you know, the purchase was made from the middleman down to the market hmm. is another cost. Hmm. So you see them having to pay their way through the road because, mm -hmm. of course, you have to tip some tip people. Some people. Mm -hmm. And then besides that, you also have to pay high cost of transporting uh, those items. You also have to pay council folks, task force, uh, yeah. the security officers so who decide they owe something. The so by the time they finally get the produce to its destination, yeah. the, the cost has reached like 100 naira. Mm. This same item that was bought from the farmer one for naira. just one naira. Wow. It's crazy. Uh, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, we do have to go to the news. I had one or two things I wanted to add to that mm. uh, regarding um, job creation. Mm. So mm. the value chain mm. also creates jobs. Yes. So if, if I harvest cocoa, mm. then I process it, mm. yeah. then package it. So okay. there are jobs that are created Along every step the of the way, yeah. uh, even though it's still essentially raw cocoa that we're exporting yeah. out of yeah. the country. Anyway, we have to take the news now, and Ibrahim is on standby for us. Right, good morning. Welcome to the news. One well, sixty-seven Nigerians suspected of being involved in internet scams have been arrested in an operation that started three weeks ago. Operation Rewired is a joint effort of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation. TVC News senior political correspondent Adelio Zubakum was at, the e an, uh, at an EFCC briefing. On the 12th of August, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission placed more than 77 Nigerians on red alert after investigations by the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation linked them to an internet scam syndicate that has defrauded tens of Americans of more than $60 million. In a joint operation between both government agencies, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission instructed all its officers to track the suspects. This led to raids in Nigeria and the United States. Being an international model operation targeted at the varied forms of computer-related frauds, the EFCC FBI collaborative operation spanning three weeks was designed to intercept and interrupt the global network of internet fraud stars. Our efforts in collaborating, uh, coordinating the EFCC FBI joint operations in Nigeria recorded tremendous successes, leading to a number of arrests, seizures, and recoveries. The suspected fraud stars arrested in the course of this operation will be prosecuted accordingly. The legal attaché of the FBI says more than 20,000 compromised emails were examined during their investigations and more have been looked into. The FBI, through our legal attaché offices around the world, collaborated with our national and international partners such as EFCC to develop a strategy that focuses on dismantling the most significant cyber criminal enterprises. In summary, the surge of resources for this operation will serve as a centerpiece for future criminal, cyber criminal strategy moving forward.
With this success, the EFCC says it will strengthen its relationship with the FBI and other international law enforcement agencies, especially in areas of exchange of information and actionable intelligence. Ayodele Zubaku, TVC News, Lagos. Well, many had no idea about what had happened earlier uh, yesterday uh, and went about their normal businesses. It was hours later they heard that members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria came out on the street uh, uh, to horridly mark this year's Ashura procession. The sect is claiming that three of its members were killed by the police, but it's a claim that the law enforcement body describes as false. Our correspondent, Tessie McKinley, has the story. Security personnel are on duty on the streets of Kaduna. But many residents of the state have no idea why they are out on different sports. When I go home and settle down, I will ask my husband. I saw police van or operation. I saw them at events around about what's happening. I don't know what's happened, but I don't see the police car on the road. I don't know what happened. Some got tips that members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria had come out earlier on Ashura procession, marked globally by Muslims. It's an annual event to commemorate the killing of Imam Hussein, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad. We've been hearing about this uh, share of a teen. Crisis in Kaduna, number one share is the major issue in Kaduna state. I asked, they say maybe these Shia people attempt to come out. That's the reason why the security men are all over the place. But members of the Shiite sect allege that the police killed three of them in the state. It's a claim the police have refuted, insisting that they professionally dispersed the procession with no loss of lives recorded. This is one of the spots here in Kaduna where members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria usually converge. But the police were out to prevent them from gathering. Authorities say the movement remains outlawed. Tessem Akende, TVC News, Kaduna. There was also a Shiite procession in Abuja, but it ended shortly after it started. Members of the Islamic movement uh, dispersed due to fear of a crackdown by the police. Our defense correspondent, Sifon Asin, has this story as well. A procession by members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, a group proscribed by the Nigerian authorities and designated a terrorist organization. The religious procession is meant to commemorate the death of one of the founding fathers of their faith. The event had barely begun in several parts of Abuja before the Shiites were forced to disperse for fear of a crackdown on them by the police. Security had been tightened in Abuja ahead of the procession. The police mounted a stop and search operation on major roads in a bid to identify and arrest members of the Shiite movement. So security operatives had been everywhere. Security had been beefed up in almost every corner and um, in some instances um, causing traffic tail back. Earlier, the police authorities in a statement emphasized the ban on the activities by the group was still in force and any procession would be deemed illegal. Sifon Asian, TVC News, Abuja. And South Africa has come up with what the government says is a plan to deal with attacks on foreigners. At a news conference on Tuesday, three ministers said the plan includes an intelligence-driven operation that would strengthen police to ensure speedy arrest of people who attack migrants. The ministers of Justice, Crime Prevention and Security Cluster also disclosed, uh, disclosed plans to deport people without proper documentation and charge employers who breach immigration laws. They said close to 700 suspects have been arrested since September the 1st. And 640 Nigerians living in South Africa will be coming back to the country as the federal government starts evacuating nationals today. The chairperson of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike W. Irua, uh, says that uh, two planes would be used in flying those who would be back, uh, brought back. The decision to evacuate them is due to xenophobic attacks on foreign, foreign nationals in South Africa, which began about a week ago and continued into Sunday night. And as a news update for this hour, Weather update is next.
that when looking at the newspaper headlines uh, this Wednesday, September 11, 2019. It's a very significant date. Though. Yes, it is. Uh, the Punch says Buhari versus Atiku tribunal rules today. APC PDP confident of victory. Page 21 has more on that story. Uh, meanwhile, in the photo story here, it says IMN alleges 15 Shiites killed, police say 64 arrested. It also says right at the bottom here, minimum wage, federal government labor agree on fresh talks. Abducted Ondo professor found dead in the bush. Adeyeye loses seat, Ajimobi fails in Senate bid. It also says uh, right beside the uh, flag here, it says we'll continue to pursue Leah Sharibu's release, according to the Red Cross. On abandoned projects, reps furious as Emefiele NDDC shot panel. Uh, just above here, it says, uh, government begins evacuation today. Atmosphere tense in South Africa. APC repays my sacrifice with evil, says Okorocha. Federal government reduces 2020 budget size to 9.7 trillion naira, cuts oil benchmarks to $55 per barrel. And finally... 10 power plants idle. Generation tumbles to 2,866 megawatts. That's what we have on the cover of the punch. Yeah, let's look at the Vanguard uh, this Wednesday. Bailout. Pressure on states as federal government starts deductions. That story is on page five. There's a lot of pressure right now. Uh, cuts 2020 budget projections to 9.7 trillion there and reduces capital expenditure to 2 trillion. Uh, says fiscal challenges requires bold, decisive actions. Now up here we have a few stories. Uh, first batch of 320 Nigerians back from South Africa today. And uh, Ohaneze asks Southeast governors to prepare for returnees. Uh, CBN slams penalties for delayed e-payment transactions. And at the bottom here we have a few stories. IMN claims 12 killed as police disperse members on street procession. No casualties, say police. AHC petition, court rules on Friday. And uh, abducted applied maths professor murdered in Ondo. That's a sad one. And Atiku versus Buhari anxiety as tribunal delivers judgment today. Finally, I'll treat Boko Haram as bandits, says Buhari. That's a story on page nine. That's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. We have the Nation newspaper up next, and it says here uh, on the cover, <clears throat> ex-Chief Justice quizzed over $9.6 billion contract verdict. Detectives debrief three senior lawyers and NPC subsidiaries chiefs interrogated. Uh, it also says here, um, just above the photo story, it says federal government proposes $9.789 trillion budget for 2020. Page 10 has more on that. Dezani forfeits 14.4 billion naira worth of jewelry to the federal government. Items acquired in 2012. That's uh, over seven years ago. Page 41 has more on that. FBI combs Nigeria for $1.2 billion cyber fraudsters. EFCC arrests 167. And finally, Ajimobi Adeyeye lose at tribunal. Yayi, Orji, Gobir, win. That's what we have on the cover of The Nation. All right, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. 614 billion Naira bailout fund. Federal government to begin deductions this month. Uh, to stop salaries not linked to IPPIS from October. Uh, plans 9.7 trillion Naira total budget for 2020. Uh, Fiamis wife's Convoy attacked, one feared killed, wow. And uh, Niger Republic bans rice exportation to Nigeria. Uh, Lebanese murdered, dumped inside well in Lagos. May God suspected. That's a story on page 30. And up here, a few other stories. Ajimobi, Adi, Luz, Balogun, Olujimi, Buhari, win at tribunal. And court orders a uh, final four feature of Diazani's $40 million worth of jewelry. And kidnapped professor of Ondo Varsity found dead. Finally, uh, over 1,400 killed by gunmen within six months in Nigeria. That's the, sto that's the story you find on page seven. 
And that's all we can take on the cover of the Nigerian Tribune. We have this day newspaper as quickly as possible here. It says uh, 12 feared killed as police Shiite clash during uh, marches. We acted professionally, say police. Clarify ban on procession applied to IMN only. Hmm. Uh, Buhari Atiku camps upbeat as tribunal delivers judgment today. Access Bank reaping benefits of merger, says Afri Interest CEO. Insurgents not in control of any Nigerian territory, uh, Buratai insists. And finally, analysts advocate expansionary budget. Federal government estimates 9.7 trillion naira in 2020. That's what we have on the cover of this day. All right, that's about all that we can take on the newspaper headlines. And of course, uh, we're going to be taking a break and be back with the traffic situation in Lagos. Welcome back. We're going to be taking the traffic reports right now. And please note that you can always be a part of the segment uh, by uh, sending us a message on Facebook or Twitter to let us know uh, what the traffic situation is where you are. But, you know, hopefully uh, you'll also be able to send us the photograph as well for what it looks like. I've got my girls in the kitchen and they're going to be uh, supporting. We are not enough for Charlie's Angels, morning. but that's all right. All right, so we're going to be starting right now from mile 12. So mile 12 to Kuruda Road. Let's see what's happening there. It's quite busy uh, right now. On the bridge is jam-packed. Um, it's not as red as it normally is, so it's not too bad, but you're going to spend quite a bit of time there uh, nevertheless. Now, um, right after mile 12, as you approach uh, Ikurudu Road, it frees up. It frees up very nicely uh, along the Bayo Shodipo axis. And then as you approach uh, the main Ikorodu Road towards Ojota, it begins to get busy again. But actually not too bad until uh, you arrive uh, around uh, the Union Bank axis uh, at K2. Uh, now, of course, it starts getting very busy there once again. And as you approach... Uh, uh, Ojota area, it starts getting a bit slower, a bit tight. And then K2 Garage as well is quite busy because of the bus stop. Now, it's a major bus stop, and what you would expect is that it will be busy. And, of course, the construction is still going ongoing, and hopefully it should be uh, sorted out shortly. Tipper Garage. From Tipper Garage, it starts it's freeze up again, uh, which is good news for this morning. And then, like I said before, at Ojota, it's quite busy. There's uh, some patches of road there that are not too good. Uh, Ojota is not too bad this morning, actually, um, except at the major, at the bus stop itself, where uh, the buses, the BRT, and you know, all of them, they stop at that, at that bus stop. And uh, right after that, it's very free, very free, all the way to Maryland. Uh, Maryland is free right now. And uh, as you approach, um, of course, all the major bus stops are then busy, just slightly busy all along that axis as we go along. So I'm just gonna mention the various bus stops that I can see here. Maryland bus stop, it's, uh, it's busy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's in the morning and it's 6.30, so it's, uh, it's to be expected. Right after Maryland bus stop, uh, Idiroko is free right now. That's good, that's good news, very good news. So if you're moving in that axis, it's not too bad. Owando petrol station is a bit busy because it's a service lane, so that is to be expected. And then uh, still on Ikorodu Road, Anthony is busy right now, but not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, you probably spend about five minutes, five to seven minutes at the bus stop right now. Uh, still on Ikorodu Road. After Anthony, it's free. Wow. It's free until you get to, uh, where is this? Palm Grove. And then Palm Grove is busy. Onikwan, whoa, Onikwan is busy right now. And uh, so, yeah, Obanikoro is light, very light, very nice. I like that. And, okay, so all the way to right now, let's go to Jibowu area. Things are quite busy in that area. Jibowu Fadi are busy right now. But they're not bad at all, um, as bad as, you know, you normally would find uh, in the morning like this. And, of course, right after that, as you approach 
um, Ojo Elegba area, of course, the Ojo Elegba Yaba axis is free until you make that link to the third mainland bridge. That's what I have for those going to the island from Ikorudu, from K2 area, K2 mile 12, all the way. So all in all, it should take you about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes to get to the island. Ladies, do you have any uh, updates for us on Twitter, yeah. Facebook? Okay, you, you, um, you go yeah, first. I, I have one from about 20 minutes ago. Uh, at Lasma underscore gov says, truck under bridge Ikeja inside roundabout uh, broken down. Uh, vehicles to be careful as the traffic builds up. So it's probably quite tense there mm -hmm. uh, right now. A broken down truck under bridge Ikeja. That place is really tight. Yes. So it's definitely going to cause some tension. Uh, it also says the early hours uh, build up on third mainland bridge en route the island. Um, and of course, that's usual on, on a morning like this. Um, but it also says Ikeja inside to Maryland is free. And, um, you know, all the street lights are up as well. So, mm. hey, you should be able to see some free flowing traffic around there. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we'll just let Yomi come join us in the kitchen. Yeah, yes, yeah, indeed. yeah. I think that's about all that we can take. Hopefully, we'll be able to at least give you an idea what the traffic is like. A third mainland bridge isn't too bad. It's busy from the middle. So, yeah, you can get on the road uh, right after now. Anyway, I'm going to be joining the ladies in the kitchen to find out what we're going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, there, there is not uh, the usual... What? MM gist. Oh, MM gossip, you mean? <laughs> MM gossip. <laughs> uh, but you, know, you usually have that uh, days of the year thing that you. Okay, let through. me run through them then. Uh, uh, today what? is make your bed day. Make your bed. Yes. Day. Make your bed. Okay, so is it from that saying uh, how you make your bed? Is, is how uh, besides that, it also reminds you to make your bed. There are some <laughs> of us that just get <laughs> make your bed. Day. And then when you yeah. want to sleep, you just drag the bed so you and then make go your back bed to bed. Oh, no, my wife is still in bed. So oh, I'm okay. So, so th that's actually been something that I, I don't know. I've, hmm. Making the bed is a big deal for me. Mm. I, I actually realized uh, after living with people, and I say people, both men and women, that I don't make the bed very well. And this was a thing for me only when I realized I had to teach the kids to make the bed. So I started feeling like, okay, so I'm not doing this thing perfect. So if I teach them, I might be teaching them something not as perfect. And I started thinking, so who exactly am I going to ask to help me? So you know there's teach. the fancy type of folding the edges yes. and all that. No. You, no. Especially when you have to go to work. Drag it. Both raise the mattress. They. Put it on that. No, raise the, the mattress. Put it on that. Both. The, it, the most way. important thing is the surface is straight. Yeah. No. <laughs> that surface is straight one is what I've been doing since. You should keep not, doing it. So there's the who L, has that there's time? The L fold. Uh -huh. I, I Googled this thing. There's the L fold where the bottom of the bed is straight. Mm. The bottom of the mattress is straight. Go straight under. Then the two sides fold over it. And it gives you a nice straight line. There are some people is... that earn a living making a bed, <laughs> but I earn a living. B, yeah. <laughs> so it's a big deal for I want people. my bed to be clean, to I'm be straight, sure, to sure be clear. I'm not sure having arguments over. No, but it's a big deal for some people. So I actually, uh, I actually, bed, I actually had a serious fight with you know someone over this particular issue. Lay your led, bed. Yes. Wow. It actually led to a major. Bro, really big deal. Whoa. So I started feeling very conscious of it. Like, did I? Like, it was. I, I didn't get. Are it. we still talking about? Trying. Okay, so there's <laughs> there's this military military standard of okay boarding school standard. Let me not say let me not say yeah, military yeah. boarding school standard of making the bed. I felt was just OCD. So I've, I also read up that people that don't make their bed live a certain lifestyle. People oh, I thought you meant they will not lay down. It like went you. deep. Like, I was like, oh. I didn't understand there was so much information about anyway. making the bed. Okay, I'm, t I'm stopping now. Let, let me just go we on. Was, it was a really <laughs> big deal. So today is also Hot Cross Bond Day. And uh, for those who like nursery rhymes, it's a big deal because there's a particular nursery rhyme I like of it. It goes, hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. <laughs> if you have no daughters, give them to your sons. <laughs> And then today is also Patriots Day. Of course, that affects uh, the U.S., uh, mm. considering the fact that today is 9-11. Yeah. Uh, the September remembrance, 11. yes. Yeah. Uh, today is also No News is Good News Day. You know, I've never been quite sure about this expression of no news being good news, because mm. I feel like I want to know what's going on. Um, so that it basically means if, if maybe family and friends haven't reached out to you for a while, mm. 
uh, or people haven't, you know, said hello for some reason, it means that there is no bad news from them. So just count your blessings that they've not it reached It could be that the mailman isn't doing his job completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so today... That people haven't reached out to you. Yeah, right? that, yeah, so if they are reaching out to you, there are some people that when they reach out to you, you know that, ah, Uncle Conte Shelley, something like that. Yeah. Speaking of reaching out, <laughs> oh, yeah. speaking of reaching out, uh, yesterday I called my mom. Oh, okay. um, and you, because I, I wanted to make it a habit to call her more Richard, often. Yeah. Yeah, because That's sometimes good. you just, you know, you don't pay attention yeah. and it's been a week, two weeks, three weeks, and mm. one month and three mm. months and, and all of that. That's really and I'm good. sort of like that because um, I'm a seriously independent person. So mm. if you leave me by myself, mm. you know, I can go on for three months without reaching out to people. So, but I'm not consciously doing it. And then in the evening, I called my brother and mm. reached out, we spoke, and then we had like this backlog of so many things to catch up on before I knew it. I was sitting in the car. Wow. And I got home like 8 o'clock. By the time I was going inside the house, it was like almost 10. Wow. So sometimes, you know, I was, I'm just saying that, you know, to say this to someone out there, reach out. Yeah. Mm. Especially to family, because at the end of the day, when the chips are down, mm. those are the people these are the guys that you're yeah. going to find around. If yeah. you ever find yourself arrested or in jail, yeah. I'm telling you, man, you're not going to find your friends around. They it's, won't even turn it's up. family that will turn up. <laughs> if you ever find yourself in a hospital for mm. any reason, mm. uh, debilitating illness, it's family. Mm. And then I you keep understand? telling it's people. It's always family. Mm. Yeah. We are, we are so into the fact that we are growing old, uh, life moves on. We forget that even our parents, too, are growing old. Mm. So the same way you're growing old, your parents are growing older. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, they are gone and you're like, what happened? Like, one, one minute you're sitting down. Have you ever been in that state where you probably saw an old photo of your mom? And then the next time you see her, you look and you're like, wow. Is it the same person? Mm. Yeah. She's older. Yeah, yeah. older. Time is passing and it's not waiting for anybody. Anyway, moving on. Today is quiet day. <laughs> <Okay. Just> quiet. <laughs> I'm Imagine having wake up Nigeria and everybody's just quiet. We're all watching. No, Nobody's no, saying no. anything. <laughs> no, but and uh, yes, finally, today is, uh, well, this week basically, okay. housekeeper's week. Okay. Those people who help us to take care of our homes, do okay. the cleaning for us. Okay. You know. So maybe we should find something to give them or reward them with. Maybe, yeah. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, anyway. <laughs> but. Ah, we're gonna be taking a break now. Yes. When we get back, we're gonna return shortly with the performance and a bunch of other things for you guys. Stick Stay around. With us. You're welcome back, and it's time for us to give you the very first performance today on the show, yes. And this time, it's by Obzi Ace. Now, Obzi Ace is a rising uh, hip hop and uh, R&B artist with a bright future. And he's about to give us the first uh, music performance for this morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Great to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so Obzi Ace, you've been doing music for a very long, long time. Long time, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what has it been like? What's the journey been like? Uh, journey so far, so I can say more than actually i started the music with my brother okay he's a fuji musician okay. he used to take me along to shows okay. that time. i'm still young that time okay. so when i started my own i was like i can't do all the stuff okay so i tried to create my own style like hip-hop style okay. i started doing rb music something like that so okay and yeah. that was how it started yeah okay so you do rb yeah i do rb pop okay rb Afro, okay, so like, like you do the fusion thing, they say, yeah. uh, Afro hip hop and then fusion. Yeah, sure, sure. So do you do reggae into the fusion? No, no, I don't do reggae. So what, what, do you, what genres do you focus on? What, what what kind of stuff do you do? Is it? Um, I focus on normal R&B. R&B, yeah. With the Afro hip hop yeah. fusion. Okay, fantastic. All right. So if you were to do a collaboration with any Nigerian artist, like you could pick any Nigerian artist of your choice, who would you pick? <laughs> right now, I would like to pick Davido Obio. Davido. <laughs> yeah. So Davido is like your mentor right now. He's someone you look up to. Yes, sure, sure. Musically, right? David or Whiskey. David like or Whiskey is fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. All right, I, I'll, I'm going to be listening to your song. What's it called? Unconditionally. Unconditionally. Ah, okay. All right, I'll, I'll be listening to it. I'd All like right. to hear it. Okay. Please take it away. Okay. Ah, well done. Great job there by Obzi Ace. Nice one. 
I think I should color my hair a little bit like a blonde, do like blonde on my hair on my beard or something like that. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> you already have a color going on. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. It looks nice. Just let that grow out a little bit more. How are you doing this morning? Hi. Hey. Now something special is gonna be happening in the kitchen. I'm already excited because <laughs> you know somebody must have whispered to you that I like chicken salad. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so we have Chef Yede in the building and uh, something special is gonna be happening in the kitchen uh, today. And so talk to us about what you're gonna be making. Good morning, guys. I'm so excited to be here today. Again, I mean, <laughs> yeah. thanks for having me. You are um, welcome. So today I'm gonna be making a chicken salad mm -hmm. um, with um, lettuce, carrot, um, cherry tomatoes, I have some lemon, I have some cucumber. Now I'm seeing a bunch of things that look like potions. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what they are, different colors. Okay, so let's just go over them. Like, what is this? So that's the um, granite oil. Okay, so okay, just regular oil. Yes, regular oil. Uh, walnuts. Oh, walnuts, okay. And then I have um, crushed parsley. Freshly. Crushed parsley, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some honey. Ooh, honey, okay, that's good. I have some paprika. Paprika. Hmm. Chili flakes, dried chili. Chili flakes, okay. <clears throat> so nothing's gonna explode when we no, mix it together. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Olive oil. <coughs> some. <laughs> you see the difference with the color? Yeah, okay, I can see the colors. So this now. is just like a normal oil. So understand? normal oil and then this is olive yes. oil. Okay. And then we have some white wine vinegar. White. Wine vinegar. Yeah, okay. And uh, some crushed garlic, crushed garlic, and some kosher salt. Wow, this is a lot of things. And <laughs> all of this is going into our salad. One this morning. plate. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What, um, what else? We, do we have, have the pasta okay, for we the have, topping. Uh, your yes. pasta for the topping. Yes. And uh, I like this huge lemon. Then, wow. Yeah. Very juicy. We have the chicken. Okay, we have the chicken already. Yes. It looks like it's already been marinated. Mm -hmm. So mm. I marinated the chicken already to make everything easy. Yeah. And okay, then, so what did you? How did you marinate the chicken? So you so, did this overnight. I did it this morning. Okay, this morning. Okay, yes. so what, what did you put inside? Um, I had some salt, some paprika, mm -hmm. dried chili, garlic, mm -hmm. and um, some honey. Okay, some yeah. Okay, all right. So it's uh, it looks like something that's going to be a bit straightforward, but I yeah. think I want our viewers to also pay attention so that they don't miss any part of it. Okay. Now, so typically, uh, this is like just a standard chicken salad. Yes. Hmm. So, so, and then we start with uh, the chicken. Yeah. Uh, well, what do we so do? So, I'm going I'm, I'm gonna to grill the chicken a bit or mm -hmm. maybe pan fry it. Something like that. Okay, yes. yeah, we'll start with that mm -hmm. and then after that. And then I, I go again with the lettuce, the carrots. Okay, so the there's carrots tomatoes. in there as yes, well that you already, already chopped. Yes, chopped okay. around the... Mm, okay. And then, of course, the tomatoes as well. Yes. <laughs> okay, ah, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, then uh, this will be the toppings. I yes, don't think I've ever seen salad. Okay, yeah, I think I have. It's actually really nice. So basically, the point of it is sometimes when you are eating like healthy food, mm -hmm. you eat light. Yeah. So, and then you have to go all day and then, you know, have to spend all day out. And mm -hmm. maybe that's the first thing you're eating and you don't know when you're coming back to eat another food. Yeah. You can just add some pasta to it to make it a bit heavy. And yeah, then okay. It's a bit so more filling. It's more filling, yes. and then you can go longer, yeah, you can without, go longer without, without yeah. food. Okay, so I see what you mean. So even the chicken also makes it a bit it, heavier. Yes. It's, instead of. Uh, and, but it's healthy because it's chicken breast, skinless and boneless chicken breast. Okay. So it's le it has less fat. So I like this healthy breakfast that we have going mm -hmm. here. And then we're going to be squeezing a little bit of Yeah, we're going to have a, a vinegar topping. Okay. That's what I'm going to use the um, granite oil the white wine vinegar and the parsley, chopped parsley for. Ah. So it's gonna go on top of it and the lemon. So all of this is just gonna go in the, like, this is the kind of thing that I like in the morning. Everybody knows that <laughs> around here. So I think that's why they just said, you know what, you want me to go, on, go in the kitchen today. <laughs> so it's gonna be very nice. Uh, looking forward to- Me too. Everything that we're gonna, so I think we should uh, start probably working on our chicken as we yes. get ready to go on a break. And we have the pan. We have the pan. So let me help you with that. Please. I, I'm very handy in the kitchen. Okay, great. People always say that. So uh, let me turn these on for you. And uh, so, so it looks like we'll probably will have to oil um, the pan first. Yes, a right? bit with some right, olive oil. Just a little oil. bit. Okay. Yes. Some so of your olive oil. So let me just let me know how. How much? When to say? Just say when. Okay. Go on. 
That's fine. <laughs> Very good, I'm very good. I'm going to try and get some olive oil. I'm, I'm learning a thing or two. I'm going to try this this weekend. Please. It's very easy. It's just that the ingredients look so much. Yeah. But basically, that's how it is for all this salad. All the ingredients are always so much, but it just goes in one plate. Everything goes in and one plate, And it looks plate. simple yeah. when you're eating it, but you don't know how much things go in there. So I just so want to... I'm going to make it hot. Yeah. Getting ready for this. So we're going to... Um, so what did you call it? You were, you pan pan fry or pan stir? What did you call it? Pan fried chicken. Pan fried chicken. Okay, so very little oil. Yes. Lots of heat to bring. So and this is going to get done. You, you yeah, say. it's going to get a color. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dice them. Right. So when I dice them, it makes it easier to cook fast. Oh right. Okay. So I'm just okay, going to put like a, a a steak, chicken steak on the salad. Right. Right. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So okay. let's get ready for that to just warm up <laughs> right now. And uh, yeah, so chicken salad this Wednesday morning, something very healthy for us. Okay, I'm not sure I should touch that. Let's, <laughs> let me let you do that. That's part of the business. <laughs> anyway, so while uh, Chef Yede is getting ready, getting that chicken ready for us to put in the pan, we're gonna be taking a break. The first hour on Wake Up Nigeria is gone already. And uh, see you on the other side of the hour. Far. Mm, yeah, yes, indeed, indeed. And that's what happens when, you, uh, when you're on Wake Up Nigeria. Time just flies by really fast because you're having fun and things are just really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we hope you have a great morning today. So far, so good for us. Hopefully, it's getting better for you. Right this moment, we're smack in the middle of another edition. And uh, we're going to kick off the second hour right now. Yeah, my name is Yomi Oope. And I'm Titi Laya Oinso. We're live streaming. TVCentertainment.tv is the website you need. And Facebook live at TVC Connect. Now, send in your comments across all our social media platforms with the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Yes, indeed. Mm. So, hey, that app, have you downloaded it yet? I think we've been chewing your ear off about this. You need this app. When I was on holiday, yeah. I just used to click and watch. It was Click and watch. It it's as simple easy. as that. Just mm -hmm. click and watch. It says watch live. You just click yeah. with the watch live feature. Just click it. And you can get it from Android wow. or iOS stores. Watch us from anywhere in the world just with the click. Yeah. Now for another delish recipe. Yes, it Chef is. Chef Yede is in the building. Yes, so. And uh, she's already doing something really special. I mean, you can see how we put together that chicken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary, you're, together. you're acting you're, like you're it was for so me like it was, you know, the hard work. I was just looking at that tea. chicken. I just, you know. It was one yeah. of my chicken. Uh, don't, we heard you say you marinated it this morning. <laughs> ah, your me, we know your wow. me can cook. <laughs> but don't overhype your me. I was, I actually woke up. Never let us hear the end of it. Yeah, well, that's uh, if I let you guys near that salad because, you know, you guys I'm have been, you guys have been it, having you know? a ball this past few weeks and I've just been observing you, but yeah. Anyway. So it's chicken salad a la Yeyide and a la Yomi. <laughs> Let's just put it that yeah. way. But we still have another performance for you coming up very, very soon. R&B singer King T-Bams is going to be in the building. Mm -hmm. On Home Makeover, Tunde Shanu will be joining us. Uh, from the exclusive lifestyle to talk about uh, choosing the right color for your bedroom. Mm. See what I said about making the bed? You see what I said? <laughs> Make yeah. your bed and be on Next. <laughs> we have a relationship coach heading into the building soon. Damilola Ulua Toimbo, aka Ask Dams, is going to be uh, discussing releasing baggage and healing from the hurt. That's a big one, a very deep one. We should stay tuned for that. Yeah, and our blackface 
has been all over the news for the release of his own version of African Queen, which is, you know, uh, well. And uh, we'll be having a chat with him shortly. And lastly, we're going to be joined by actor and award-winning filmmaker, Badge Debule. <laughs> yes. All right, so guys, uh, something is trending right now. Okay. Yeah, I've been going through the trends, and it has to do with something significant happening today mm. in Nigeria. Uh, on the one hand, we, of course, we cannot um, ignore the 9-11. That's mm. the big topic in the world. Yeah. Uh, but today is also the Judgment Day okay. in Nigeria. I'm sure you, you're aware of what um, I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, today is when uh, we finally get um, the results uh, from the courts, the that verdict. is the tribunal, mm. yes, the verdict uh, mm. on who will continue or begin as president <laughs> of Nigeria <laughs> for today. Uh, so, so it's basically after all the appeals that have been yeah. made, yeah. what the court uh, is going to decide. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, so they're basically the standard three, uh, three standard type of judgment. So there will probably be either call for re-election. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uphold the election, the election of the yeah. pre president yeah. or declare a new president uh, the opponent winner yeah. so anything can happen wow anything can happen today guys so it's a very That's significant actually, very significant very <laughs> yeah significant. it's major yeah. but 911 you know it's you just a big mentioned deal. You just mentioned 911 the other day you know I was saying that i remember exactly where i was on 911 because i think most of the world was trying to understand what was going on yeah. because initially we thought when, when the first plane hit the Twin we Towers. Thought it was just an accident. We thought it was an accident. Yeah. So everybody was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it was what a horrible, really been sad. It was yeah. horrible. Did the pilot fall asleep? Yeah. You know, that's the first thing everybody did. Mm -hmm. he fall asleep? Maybe he had been flying for so many hours yeah. and all of that. While that was going on, mm. another plane just another hit this. Another plane just hit. And then everybody then began to yeah, think, like, oh, yeah. wow, wow. Something is happening. Yeah. Something is going and on. You know, domestically, even, uh, we also have um, our, the, the terrorist uh, attacks here as well. Mm. Uh, talking about uh, Boko Haram and all that mm. involves it. Mm. It's, it's insane how terrorism seems to have taken over so many aspects of our lives. I actually don't think I had heard of the word terrorism before 9-11. That mm. was the first time I understood what the word... Yeah, what terrorism is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we have... Chef, wow. Chef Yeh, look at that color. Look at that color. <laughs> look I'm at going all. to join her now. We're almost yeah. done, right? I yeah. really. So, how's it going? We're how's it done. going? Look the chicken, chicken is ready. It came out oh, really man. nice. Looking really nice and golden. Let me just have it. Um, Please. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> no. Everybody's protesting that I shouldn't. No. But have. I have to. No, look, that's too large. <laughs> okay, let's have a little one. A tiny. I just want to make sure that um, we season it just there right. You go. <laughs> This is the kind of thing that <laughs> on a Wednesday you need to just give you that boost, that extra energy. Exactly. Yeah. So um, tell us what you're doing here. So right now I have the chicken already done. Yeah. And then I have the lettuce cut, the cabbage is cut as well. I have my carrots, I have the tomatoes, and then the lemon cucumber. And, uh, tell, tell me what you're going to do with the lemon and the cucumber. Um, actually, I'm going to cut the cucumber now and add a little bit on this. And then I'm going to squeeze the lemon for the topping, which is okay, the so maybe, vinegar. Yeah, so maybe I should start. Um, yes, can I tell you what to do? Start with the lemon. Yeah, you Please. can tell me what to do. Let Thank me get you. a knife for that lemon. looking for the perfect knife there. Ah. So. So, yes. Okay, so you tell me. To cut the lemon into two, just the Into, bit. from the middle. From the middle, from the top here. From the top, okay. Yes. Here? Yes. Okay, that's good. I hope everyone can see me <laughs> hard at work right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you squeeze the lemon in. This one or this one? This one. Okay, the little one. Yes. You squeeze it in there. Squeeze. Everybody needs a strong man in the kitchen. <laughs> yes. <right? laughs> that can just help you do that. Squeeze. Help you squeeze lemon. Yeah, squeeze lemon. You need... Uh, you, need you need someone with strong hands. To squeeze lemon. Exactly. Really? There you go. <laughs> 
So press that and... I imagine like, how hard that was. It was really hard, right? Very difficult. I, I mean, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you need a... This is a man's job right there. Okay, so... Now, the yeah, next thing next? you're going to do is add some, um, some salt. Some salt to it, a no, little bit of salt. Let's not do the salt. Let's do the white, um, the vinegar. Okay. The vinegar. White wine vinegar. It has a little white bit. wine vinegar, just a little, a little bit. bit. Some drops, right? Maybe like four drops, one, two, two more drops. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So what the reason else? is because it's really on? sharp. Okay, it's very sharp. People are not sh careful. Yes, oh, yeah, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah, so, we have to be really okay, careful. we have to be careful. So yes, a little so bit of salt. Honey, honey next. Honey next? So, yes. A little bit of honey mm -hmm. or everything. Keep pouring, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. That's fine. I just love this job. This is like a really cool job. <laughs> he looks really nice. Yeah. Okay. Then the next thing will be the the oil. The oil. So this is yes. the olive oil. No, that's the plain oil. Okay, the plain oil. Yes. Okay. Why does it look like olive oil? Okay. Uh, but just then a when bit. you do that, you need to whisk. As whisk as I do it. Yes. Okay. So I start whisking first mm -hmm. or I start pouring first? Pour, whisk the first time. and then pour through the middle. Like that? And keep the yeah, pour. That's done. You need to whisk. Okay. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So then put that gradually and well, see the miracle that will happen now. Can you see how light it was before? Yeah. It becomes sticking. It's thickening. It's thickening. Yeah. It's a miracle. Well done. <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Keep doing so that, I you have to add more. Keep doing okay, that. Okay, I need to add Keep more. Keep doing it okay. until it's taken as well. All right. Let's keep doing okay. that. Keep so, on doing it. Okay, so I should just keep doing it. Yes. So I'm hard at work right now in the kitchen, just trying to ensure that, you know, everything is perfect for us. <laughs> um, and our perfect chicken salad that we're making. Right here. Ah, so um, we are going to be taking a break. And then when we get back, there's more in the kitchen and also a performance as well. Something special is going to be happening right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Stick around. Welcome back. Now we have Ogufora Abolaji right here, officially on stage as T Bams. Now he released his single in 2012, which got him a lot of attention and he's been steadily on the rise since then. Now, just last month, he released a new single titled Forward Ever. And T Bams is right here in the studio. Right. Ah, ah. Hey, I, I can even see it on yeah, your shirt. Okay, so uh, you need the microphone to talk to me, yeah? But I love the fact that it's on your shirt. Yeah. So t tell us uh, how Forward Ever came to be. Hmm? Um, actually, I got inspired of this song uh, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, okay. you know, due to the situation of things in Nigeria. Okay. You know, everyone wants to be there. They want to get to the top. Mm. Then I'm like, okay, let me just try to work on something that I can use to motivate the young ones out there okay so like if you can believe in yourself if you can work out mm. then that surely can get to the top yeah. then i have to come with this forward forward ever. Ever, yeah yes sir. So, and obviously so. backward never backward never yeah of course in the in the <laughs> song yeah, yeah. No, there's a legs uh, yeah. you know you have to like maybe after the forward ever, then you say backward right. never yeah beautiful beautiful okay so is r&b through and through since 2012 r&b since 2012 yeah of course okay afro pop generally Okay, yeah. beautiful. Uh, who, so who inspired you to go into to um, I would say the likes of Wandiko, mm. Wheezy, mm. Um, Trey Songs, wow. um, All right. Chris Brown, yeah. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm waiting to hear that your voice, flex, okay. flexing of this, your voice, so your vocal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't wait, I can't wait. Okay. So we have here King t Bams with his new track, Forward Ever. Take it away. I'm a local party, boy. You let me wash it. We share what we got, but we share. Just bless my way, make a no go astray. Oh yeah, interesting performance. Well done, T Bams. Uh, that song is titled uh, Forward Ever. Okay, so of course we have to move about forward. <laughs> and this time it's for us to talk about homes. You know, our homes, uh, uh, talking about making our homes beautiful. Hmm? 
and uh, I have uh, Tunde Shanu uh, right here with me. He is the creative director of the Exclusive Lifestyle. Uh, their services include home and furniture making, uh, wall, window and floor treatment, interior designing and space management. Our topic this morning though is focused on the bedroom and choosing the best color for your bedroom. Okay, so I love that lilac thing I saw just now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Shan. Thank you uh, fantastic. for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Yeah. So what are the basic things we need to know when we want to choose a color for our bedroom? Uh, basically, you, you look at first, you look at um, what type of tone you want to set for the, for the bedroom. Okay. So based on that, you, you, you choose your color palette. Because I always advise that you have like um, option, optional colors, like three options. And you paint, you, you, you get like a bit, a portion of paint of those different colors. Okay. You paint it on your wall, then you sleep over it. Wait, you will buy the different colors? Buy just a portion of it's them. It's possible to buy a portion? Yes, it okay. is. It is. It's possible to just buy like a liter. Okay. Yeah. And just paint, paint is basically like the most inexpensive part of your furnishing. Really? Yes. Okay. It's the least expensive. So to that extent, you just buy like a portion of three colors, okay. paint it on your wall because you're painting the entire wall anyway. Yeah. Paint them on your wall, sleep over it. In the morning, you'll know the best ones because there are times when you have a color in mind and by the time you paint it, you'd be like, oh, it might not be as good as you as expected. You so when you have like those options on the wall already and you sleep over it, you'll know the best one that complements the colors you already have in the house. But how do you choose the colors? Mm, basically, you have to consider your permanent fixtures. Permanent fixtures? Yes. Uh, say, for example, your doors? Yes, your, your doors, wardrobes. your wardrobe, okay. yeah, and your, your bed itself. Curtains might not be con considered a permanent fixture because you can always change it. But by the time you consider all this, and your curtains too, anyway, you consider your co the colors on your curtains, okay. then you make the decision based on that. Okay, so you put a combination of all of those uh, when into you're making into a decision. consideration, yes. Okay, so, okay let, let, let's decide on a particular color. Say, for example, you have brown doors, brown wardrobes, you have uh, brown curtains. How do you choose a color? <laughs> wow, brown curtains. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. a lot of brown going yeah, on there. Yeah, there's a whole lot of brown okay, going on there. So, so basically, you you're, you're thinking of something brighter, okay. than about, something that will complement them. Because the the... Color set mood for your interior, yes. your environment. Yes. So basically, the, the, the brown is like setting like a dull, moody type of color. Okay, so, so, so do you're you looking for white or cream? So yeah, cream, white, white. White is always like safe. Okay. So I, will, I will always go say white. Well, white is, white is good. Okay. Because it is like a safe color, but like a cream. Cream has, a, you have a lot of shades of, okay. of Besides cream. Besides cream, what else can go with that? Uh, you can use. Uh, 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 beige, perhaps? No, beige is basic. I wanted to say beige, but okay. it's still a, a, okay. the family of cream. Okay. You can lose like a lavender. On brown? Yes. Wow. Because you, you're trying, it colors set moods. Okay. So basically, uh, dark colors, deep colors are like, 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 um, like a downy type of mood. So you need something more vibrant, more exciting to put into the space, okay. then your, you know, your beddings to come into consideration yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah. So because those now, ones are not permanent fixtures. Yes. Uh, Tunde, you know, of course, that uh, there are different types of bedrooms for different people. Yeah. We have um, the, uh, a married couple's bedroom will definitely be different, different from, from a bachelor's bedroom yes, or a child or a student's yes. bedroom. Yes. So how then do you choose the colors for each bedroom? Is it possible to just do a general color for the entire house or you have to do each room according to the personality. That, that was the key word that was going to come. <laughs> the personality. personality. Okay. It's not about um, whether you're married or you're not married. or It's all about your personality or, and the type of mood you want to set okay. for, the, for the space. Okay. Because like I tell you, your colors, they t sometimes some people paint their uh, room into dark colors and sometimes they will not start feeling moody when, whenever they're in the space. They won't, the, they won't understand that the color is psychologically affecting them. So, so the brighter, the better for your uh, bedroom? The brighter, the better, yes. I, I'll say that. 
the brighter the better. But again, still it this still depends on your personality. So basically, if I have a client okay. uh, that wants to paint, I'll first get to know them. Oh, get to oh, know okay. what get makes to know who yeah, they are. Who they are. Okay. And based on that, help them choose the color. You you realize I said help them, not that I um, No, you are not the one choosing <laughs> the color for them. I'm helping them and I'll guide them to choose uh -huh. the color. So it depends on the clients, it yes. depends on personalities. Personality, yes. And, and it depends on the type of space. The type of space. Yes, yeah, saying that uh, a small space should be brighter. Yes, uh, much brighter yeah. than uh, a wider space can, you can play around with uh, darker, darker colors. colors. Then uh, vent, uh, windows, where yeah. your windows are located yeah. to matters. Because lighting coming from the window still set the tone again for even the colors you choose. So you have to put all those things into consideration okay. before you now decide on your color for painting, then before you go ahead with painting of oh, your room. This seems like a lot to take in, yes. especially for homeowners yes. and decorating your bedroom most times we just put things together and we just move on with life yes. and so this is what differentiates uh, a home uh, you know someone who handles uh, decoration of homes doing home makeovers from regular folks like us uh, but thank you so much Tunde Shanu for being on the show today thank you for having me interesting it's my conversation pleasure. thank you so much now we'll take a break and return shortly stay with us this week of Nigeria All right, welcome back to the kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. I've got Yei Ide, and uh, I'm an able assistant. I've been putting my hands to work, making things uh, happen right here in the kitchen. So it's chicken salad, but with, mm. you know, with a with a twist, with a twist of different things that that, that we put together. So let's take us through this whole process once again, and then okay. we'll begin uh, the plating process. All right. So here I have the marinated chicken with the paprika, um, chili. Uh, garlic and some salt. Mm. That's for that one, and a little bit of honey. I have the pasta here as well. Mm -hmm. I boiled with some salt and olive. Yeah, just yeah. So this, is, this one is going to be for part of the garnishing yes, as well. Yes, yes. Okay. We have and then, the, of course, we have our the vegetables. veggies yeah. and everything. And then we have this that oh, my this? assistant did. Exactly. A uh, vinegar sauce. It's a amazing. A vinegar sauce. <laughs> I, uh, that was a lemon and. Uh, Lemon oil, uh, I won't forget. Um, parsley. Well, yeah, we had some parsley in there. We had honey. some honey in there. White as well. wine vinegar and some salt. And a little bit of salt. And yes. we just mix all of that together. It tastes amazing, right? It's really, really good. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we're ready to, to start putting it together on plate. So let's do one plate and see what that looks like. Okay. And while that is going on, um, we have something special that's going to be happening with you uh, in a few weeks yes. uh, called Kuti's Bistro. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so I'm really excited about this one because yeah. um, it's been a long way coming. Mm. So we're going to have this amazing Afrofusion restaurant in Ikeja. Very nice. And, and then you're going to be inviting us to a tasting. Yes, I will. The food yeah. tasting and the, um, what's it called? The main opening as well. Yeah. So you, you guys are on Instagram, like if you wanted yes, to follow you and find out. At Kuti Bistro. Kuti Bistro, Kuti's that's what it's called. With the S. Kuti's Bistro. Yes. On on Instagram. Yes. And so this bistro is just going to be, is it going to be just general, you said Afro? It's an Afro fusion. Af Afro fusion. Restaurant. So we're doing all kind of food. And it's also an a la carte where you can come in, be and confused ask, yeah. of what to eat, and we can suggest something nice for you. And I like that. So it's not just going to be something off the menu or something that you're going to be staring at on the no. on the screen and saying, "Okay, give me meat pie and what." No, no, okay. no, 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 no. So really good, really good, very nice. Okay, so we're putting this together, and it's taking shape. The salad is taking shape already. I don't know. Okay, yeah. So the camera is picking it up. Uh, yeah, so that's that's going on there. At some point, we're going to be throwing in the chicken. Yes, we are. Yeah. So the pasta. Mm. So while that is taking shape, okay, you can see the ingredients on the screen. Uh, very, very straightforward, not too um, complicated. We have honey, garlic, lemon, lettuce, uh, well, something that's called yeadis spice. Yes, it's yeah. a, a nice ingredient that I blend together. I always put in my thing to give it. Oh, so that's your secret ingredient. My secret ingredients, yes. Hmm. And then we have uh, white wine vinegar, the pasta, carrots, olive oil, uh, 
Hoysa sauce, salt, and uh, what else? I think we have a few other things there. Yeah, honey. And they are, of course, the honey as well. Yes. Oh, there you go. Can you guys see this? So she's making the first plate for me because, you know, just rewarding me for all my hard work this morning. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's just, you know, so jealous that I'm in the kitchen today while my favorite meal is being made. So. Anyway, so while that is going on, guess what, guys? We've been talking about this since yesterday. Blackface is in the building, believe it or not. And he's with Mary right now. And uh, all everybody wants to know is about this African queen story. But anyway, let, let me let them uh, get to it. Hey, guys. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> we'll decide the pace, OK? <laughs> but then, of course, it's great to have Blackface here. He is a singer, songwriter, and record producer who founded the Plantation Boys with Two-Face and Faze when they were studying at the Institute of Management Technology he made the news recently with the release of his own version of African Queen by Two-Face Edibia. And I know, okay, that, that seems to be like the center of the conversation today. Yeah, uh, I know morning. quite well you have, uh, good morning. Good I know you morning. have an album and some other things going on, but let's first talk about this African Queen since it seems that's what everybody wants to talk about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so you released your own version of African Queen. Uh, just a few days ago, and it's been trending uh, for various reasons. Uh, first off, I'm just curious, why did you decide uh, to release uh, that version? Uh, you know, basically, is music, and uh, music has its ethics, mm -hmm. you know. It's not the first time that two people have been on a song. True. Like, two people have done a version of a song. True. And basically, when people do versions like that, it's either maybe, uh, maybe somebody feels like the song wasn't rendered properly, mm. or someone feels like maybe you know the song could have been done you in know, a different done way. Done maybe like you know. So basically, I've seen it over time, and I've decided I decided that so many people were recording African Queen. Okay. Or like there's a guy called Sadiki. You know, he's in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I never heard of him, but he recorded African Queen. And some of the lyrics like got, you know, twisted, you know? So we somehow when you write something and people are singing it and singing it in a different way. You have a picture of what you actually wanted what originally. What it is, not yeah. even what you actually wanted, mm -hmm. what it actually is. Supposed to be. So when people start to change it, you know, you, you yourself that created that thing, your mind will always be telling you like, oh, you know. You this know, isn't the way I want this it. This is not the way I want it to be. And so there's no other better way for me to express myself towards the song, because, you know, the song is like going out of, uh, you know, so I just had to record it again for the people that really, you know, love the music. Mm. And the music is for the black women and is for the respect for the black women, our mothers, you know. So I really had to sing it again for them to really understand what I was thinking about and the vibe I was thinking about. Now, we've you had um, several songwriters do something similar, where okay. you sell your songs and then maybe you just feel like you'd prefer a different um, vibe to it, so you just do your own version. Uh, however, many people are of the opinion that it's way more than you just wanting to do your own version. That it's, uh, they're bringing it up again to the whole uh, two-face versus black-face uh, issue. Is, is, uh, no, does no. it have anything to do with no, it? No, it doesn't have. It doesn't have. He's already done his own, like, his own rendition. I think he's done it, like, about twice or so, you know? Well, I give him the right to sing the song, of which if I didn't give him the right to sing the song, he wouldn't have been able to sing the song. So he tells you I have an, I have an edge on the song than him, the singer, you know? If I didn't say, you can sing the song, there's no way he can sing the song. Mm. So then there's, there's no way nobody, anybody should be saying, why should I sing my own song? Mm. So basically, so there, just, there are no hard feelings, as most no, people think. No, no, it's just no. a case of you giving a version of yeah, a song. I want, I want to sing it like the way I feel like I want to render it, you know? Like, I, I was like excited like about last week, mm. where I was hearing this guy called Johnny Drill yeah. singing You and I, 
you know, yeah. you and I that I was in the Plantation yes. Boys first album. Yes. Like I said, that's the first song I ever wrote. Wow. But you had two phase singing the summer part of the of the verses and phase, phase coming course, into. Yes. It doesn't really mean that they own the right to that song. I wrote the song. So I decide who sings it. And, who and I decide what? who doesn't sing it. Okay. So no, okay. It, it, there's nothing about it. So we've established that. We yeah. can move on to other things. Yeah. I know you have your album coming up. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been working, like I said, the last time I was here, I told them I was, I, I just put a, I was getting ready to uh, put another album out, which is Defender Volume 2, which is called Rising Sun. Okay. I had the, the Volume 1 out, which is... Uh, you know, had like about like some 20 songs on it. That was in like 2015, 2016 slash, you know? Does it have the, the, the new album, does it have uh, the African Queen on it? Or no, it's the not? African Queen is really going to be on an album of mine that is called Jungle Fever. Okay. And Jungle Fever is, um, I'm trying to do the international edition. Okay. Because I've already done the album before. Okay. So that's the reason why people are like, yo, we've heard him sing African Queen before. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 okay. blah. But, it's, but it's, it's my decision if I want to record it 10 times, 100 times. It's my decision to do that. It, it, nobody tells me how to render my music, okay. you understand. So, um, so what should we look forward to your new album? Yeah, like my new album is really, really going to be exciting because it's called Rising Sun, you know, and it's Rising Sun for a reason because, you know, sometimes people expect the other part of you, but I'm just letting them know that, look, man, there's no way they can stop the rising sun. I'm just a rising sun and I'm still going to rise. No matter how long they wait, That's the it. sun is still going to come right up. So they shouldn't worry about it. This is just something that... I have to do. I have to go through all the talks and the banters and talk here and talk there and people misunderstanding where I'm coming from. That is bound to happen. True. But it doesn't really mean that it's going to stop the music. Fantastic. So the music will keep coming. Fantastic. And we're looking understand? forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, yeah. I like your version, though, the African version. Yeah, I think thanks. it's really nice. Yeah, I think thanks, it's really nice. Thanks, thanks. All right, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad people like it. And thanks for the support, people. Just keep listening. More music coming. Thank you. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, we just had the conversation with Blackface, especially talking about uh, his current project. Uh, the second hour is over, and we will definitely be back after this break with more on Wake Up Nigeria. Stay with us. We're still here, and we've had quite a great day so far. Yes, indeed, we have, and uh, we've gone through amaz amazing uh, musical performances, insightful conversations as well. Very. And we just had Blackface on, mm -hmm. uh, explaining a few things. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Calming, <laughs> free nerves. There's but, yeah. also been food courtesy Chef Yome yeah. and Chef, Ye Chef Yejide, and uh, Yejide, and it's. Very tasty. I, yeah. I can say that now because I've tasted it. <laughs> oh yeah, very, very tasty. I mean, she's making chicken salad. Yes. And uh, she's also opening a, a bistro somewhere in Ikeja in a few weeks, and she's inviting us for tasting. That's very important. So I mean, so I'm going to be welcoming you guys uh, when you come because uh, Yomi will be right there at the door. Yeah, yeah so I'll, if you want I'll to be see, at the door of you of, want to see Yomi right of there. Kuti's bistro, and uh, that's going to be happening anyway. There's more to come on Wake Up Nigeria this morning. Uh, don't forget, my name is Yomi Hope. And I'm Titi Lyo Oye. So you can watch us live. TVCentertainment.tv is the website. And of course, we're streaming live on Facebook at TVC Connect. Ah, send in your comments using the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. And uh, yeah, we'll probably read your comments online at some point. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Now, please download the app. Stop. Wait. Don't wait. Just go to your app store. That's the Android or iOS app stores. Download the app from us and watch us from anywhere in the world. Yeah. Now, on relationship, coming up very shortly, mm -hmm. Ask Dams. Mm -hmm. uh, Damilola Oluwatomibo is going to be joining us to discuss uh, releasing 
baggage and healing from hurt. Lastly, we're going to be joined by actor filmmaker Badge Adibuli. What are your low key pain? I say you bad, Rich. Oh, more just when I want to start the commot. We need the commot. We're just friends. Okay, now, nah, Abby, okay, now. Nah. Just give me the gist now. Nah. What's I up? I'm serious. We are just friends. Friends. <laughs> right. What? What? I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Filmmaking in Nigeria. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's improving. Things are getting better. Yeah. I, I, I'm just liking what I'm seeing. Mm hmm. Um, and also, I think it's also been driven by a lot of the young guys. Yeah. So the young guys, um, some people graduate maybe at 22, 23, yeah. and they say, you know what, I want to be a filmmaker. So they start early. Yeah. Some of these guys go to New York film school. They mm -hmm. really put in the work. And so now, in their 20s, it's, it's really it's still showing. It's beginning to show. And the, and the younger stories, Nigerian... The, all the stories are improving yeah. and they're becoming more modern. Even um, our documentaries are looking better. Yeah. Um, a young Nigerian won uh, best virtual reality film mm. in, at the Venus um, Film Festival just over the weekend. Oftentimes, so, yeah. all, all, all folks want or need is the right equipment. Mm. Even older folks can also achieve stuff. We yeah. see cases of um, people who have been in the industry for several years who haven't won anything mm. are getting to win now because of the improvements, general international improvement of uh, cinematography. Yeah. Uh, this year, I believe it was uh, a Korean or Japanese, someone from Asia that won. And it was a surprise because when you talk about directing, yeah. it's, it's not something that uh, <laughs> non-Americans or often win, often win, or non-European. Yeah. So yeah. it was a big deal for an Asian to win it. I've been thinking about directing. Actually, I think I was thinking of you know taking like a few courses in directing. I, I look at uh, ladies like uh, Kemi Adetiba, mm. you know, and mm. I, I think about women who are doing great things in that particular industry as well. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, but that might just be the next level, you know, not the makeup and the hair and the clothes. So think about it. Think yeah. about it and uh, make that. make that move. I, I production think. production is actually a very very important feature of anything TV, radio. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one that people take for granted, yet it is essential. Welcome back. Now it's time for our relationship segment. And with us, we have Damilola Olua Toimbo, a wordsmith, author, life coach, and corporate trainer. Now our topic this morning is a really deep one. Releasing the baggage and healing from the hurt. Now, that's why he's here. We had a, a, a session or a, a series yeah. titled The Art of the Breakup. The Art of the Breakup. <laughs> and now we're trying to heal from this hurt, yep. uh, get letting go of the baggage. So I think we need to break down what baggage actually is. Okay, so you know how you go to the airport mm. and then they tell you that you have a, a baggage limit. Yes. Many times, maybe like 23 kilograms or something like that. And then you see those people at the airport who have like eight Bags. different suitcases mm. and everything is looking tense and people are wondering, are those guys relocating to the moon mm. or something like that? That's mm. the picture some people have or that's the picture of certain people yeah. in their relationships. Wow. You know, because they have this suitcase from... Jade and yeah. that's his case from Badi and mm. that one from Madi, all the different people they've been with over the years. Yeah. So what, what exactly is baggage? They are proclivities, tendencies, attitudes, mm. um, hurts, mm. pain, guilt, shame that people have picked up from their different relationships. Mm. And ever so op often what happens is people don't even realize what's going on. Mm. Um, and then they get to a junction in life where they're supposed to proverbially take flight at the airport. Yeah. And then there is all those things holding them back. And so, you know, at the airport, sometimes they're going to turn them down and say, yeah. okay, you know what, you're going to miss this flight because yeah. you, you don't have enough money or baggage allowance for this. Mm -hmm. So similarly, people are stuck on the verge of new relationships because they have emotional issues they haven't dealt with okay. uh, from previous relationships. So how do people begin to deal with that much baggage? Um, and of course, hurt is a major suitcase, yeah. right? a briefcase, in fact, box. Uh, healing from this hurt, how do people yeah. begin to do that? I think the first thing is you've got to be honest with yourself. And I, you know, I was teaching a couple of people uh, sometime last week, and I said to them that one major problem with dishonest people is that dishonest people struggle to find the help they need because they are too dishonest to admit that they are dishonest. Wow. 
here. So, okay. <laughs> so they're being so dishonest with the, themselves. Exactly. I mean, like, if you're heartbroken and you're hurting and you're bleeding, you're human. It doesn't mean you're inferior, dumb, or stupid. Mm -hmm. It just means you're in a state in your life, you know, where you need some help, some healing, some therapy. So first of all, admit that you have these issues. Ever so often, you might not be able to see them, but people around you go like, wow, you're so touchy, you're so edgy. So receive feedback from the environment and be able to filter through that. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is please avoid connecting intimately with people who are dealing with similar baggage. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, you know, ever so often when you're going through things, you want somebody who's been through that stuff. Yeah. Or, or who's dealing with that stuff. And if you're not careful, they're going to amplify the negativity you're trying to get rid of. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So simply because somebody's supporting you does not mean the support is the kind you need at that time. Mm. Um, so you also want to avoid toxic environments mm. that keep affirming that anger, like, you know, tell him, is a, yeah. a dog, is a this, is a that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, avoid all of that because you don't need to compound the pain of the complexity. And then number three, I would say, can you get some professional help? Mm. Um, so it's okay to be open to counseling, okay. it's okay to be open to therapy, it's okay to have uh, support groups, you know, either in your religious organization or community that you belong to. And number four, give yourself time. time. <laughs> that time yeah. thing is, is long, but yeah. I, I want to go back to the professional help part. Yes. Uh, a lot of people, especially in this part of the world, think of professional help as something Being that... Off or something. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm not crazy, yeah. uh, I'm not mad, mm. I don't need to go to Yaba Left. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly uh, am I supposed to achieve by getting that professional help? I think that the very first thing is to see yourself as a person of value, as an asset. Okay. Um, so people service their cars, but they okay. don't service their souls. Okay. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. Your car is possibly going to last for maybe, I don't know, five, seven years yeah. if you use it very well. Mm -hmm. Your soul is, you know, based on whatever your position is, immortal or eternal as it were. So your soul is a greater asset. Your emotions are worth investing in. And if that requires professional expertise, you know the way you go to a roadside mechanic and then the guy fixes, fixes a part of your car yeah. and then damages the other part. Okay. Where you can take that same car to an, a licensed repair mm -hmm. uh, auto shop yeah. and then you get good quality. It's more expensive, but you get good quality. Mm -hmm. So that's sometimes the difference between getting mm -hmm. counseling from a roadside friend yeah. and a professional mm -hmm. who's been licensed, trained, gone through systems and, and structures and processes uh, with some experience and some results, mm -hmm. it might cost you some money, but it's going to save you a whole lot on, on the long term. What exactly um, should I aim to be or where should I be before actually uh, agreeing that I've healed from this hurt? When you become whole, and what does that mean? That means that you still remember what you went through, mm. but you're free from the pain okay. of that memory. Mm. Yeah. The moment you're, you release the pain of the memory, you know, people say forgive and forget, and people think that that means that you, you forget, mm. that you were abused, assaulted, taken advantage of, ripped off. No, you, you don't forget what happened because yeah. you, you're not losing your mind. But you remember it, mm. but without the pain. Okay. which means that you're learning the lessons and getting the blessings mm. from the experience. I like that, so, learning the lessons and getting, and getting the, the blessings. Yes, okay. there's, there's a blessing never about All right. it. Uh, so I, I would love to hear, you know, a, a real case study here. Do you have any real case study you could share? Okay, so recently, and, and this is still a work in progress, mm. and, you know, I spoke about time. Mm. So there are dealt with a certain couple over a period mm. of years. <laughs> Wow, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. because you know when we're, when we're speaking about healing from hurt, sometimes or baggage, sometimes we're thinking it's about previous relationships, but you can deal with baggage in your marriage as well. Okay. And so there's a couple um, where the lady has felt ignored for a, a long time, mm. and she literally shot up. Wow. Yeah. Mm. The husband didn't understand what was going on, and then after through certain sessions, we were able to discover that there are certain things that she had tried mm. to correct in yeah. the relationship, and she always got shut down. Okay. And of course, after emotional outburst and all of that, mm. we're at a place now where she's beginning to say, okay, let me give it another try. So it's like a new marriage to the mm. same person. Mm. So you, in other words, you could actually be a completely different person if you let go of this baggage. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. And um, without being gender biased, I've, I've seen that a lot of ladies tend to be affected more by that than men. 
And that's because generally, if a lady is not given the secure space to express herself, after a while, she begins to shut down. Mm -hmm. And so the man says, I don't know what has happened to my wife. Well, you happened to your uh, wife. You right? did. You happened to. No, without saying it was your fault. Yeah, obviously. Okay. But just creating that safe space where everybody can be honest, mm -hmm. um, where the lady can find her voice again. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered that women have this emotional resilience. Mm -hmm. If they find that secure space, they can start again. Mm -hmm. Even the three, four, five, ten-year relationship. But what, in your opinion, is the hardest hurt to heal? There are hmm. a lot of different types of hurt. <laughs> I think it depends. I, I think it depends on the personality of the really? people involved. Yeah. Are you I, sure? I, I think so. Yeah. So it's not being ripped off by your significant other. It's not. I think. Uh, I think. It, I think. Not... I think. You know, because hurt and pain are a function of values and beliefs. Okay. Yeah. Um, some people prefer that you hurt them with your words than slapping them. Some people wow. prefer that hot slap <laughs> to, wow. to negative words, right? Wow. So there's some people you speak to in a certain tone and they just feel less of a person. They mm -hmm. can't get themselves together, even in the workplace. There are other people, you speak to them that way and they're just like, okay, well, I need to do better. Mm -hmm. So it depends on that. But I've seen that while physical pain for many people mm -hmm. can be uh, a deep mm -hmm. issue, emotional pain wow. tends to be deeper because people don't really know how deep it is. Mm -hmm. And because people don't really know how deep it is, they can respond appropriately and it can degenerate into complications and sometimes divorce. Honestly, I, I think a lot of people have learned a lot today. I've learned quite a bit myself. And that's why Dam Lola Olua Toimbo is always a go-to person in these kind of topics. Thank you so much for coming to talk it's to us once again. a pleasure. Great to be here again. Okay, hashtag Ask Dami and of course at um, at Pasadami? No, at Dami Oluwa Dami Lola Oluwa Toimbo. Dami Oluwa Toimbo on Instagram. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for coming to join us. And we have to take a quick break now. And we're really Welcome back. Yeah. Wake Up Nigeria continues now. Baj Adebule is an actor, filmmaker, and he's been in some of the biggest movies that Africa has to offer right now. Yeah, he won the Zafa Award for Best Short Film in 2015 uh, for his film, Scene Betrayal. Uh, this he did under his production outfit, Media Production. Yes, so welcome, Baj. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Baj with me. the dimples, <laughs> look at those dimples. <laughs> Ladies, look, look, just look, look, just look. Tati. What now? It's all right, it's what okay. Did you? Okay, you know what, let's get to it then. <laughs> <laughs> but um, congratulations on the award. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. It's been um, a while, yeah. When it comes to movies in, in Nigeria, you know, there's just so much drama behind the production angle, mm -hmm. uh, the aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and to get into the industry and then do this well. So what, what was your journey like? Hmm? Well, to do it well. I'm not even sure I'm doing it well yet. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for the acting, uh, it, was, it, was, it was the toughest journey I think anyone could imagine, you know. Going for, you're saying two dozen auditions in a month and two dozen, yeah, and maybe wow. getting one, mm. and that one is not like you're getting a lead role. It's probably just a supporting or just a uh, local pass. Yeah. You know, when Waka you start Waka off Waka. like that, it's very hard to keep up the spirit to keep going to keep going. But I had a very good support system. Mm. You know, I had, my mom was always there, always positive, always saying, "Don't worry, the next one, yeah. just yeah. keep going, I keep praying, keep believing in yourself, and something will give." So that that really helped. Then um, working with a lot of great directors. You know, when you work with someone that makes you feel like one day you would like give a performance that like you have it in you, you just need time, you know, working with people like that. So that helped to, to you know, push, push myself a little bit further. But for the filmmaking one, that, that one happened quite quickly, actually, because oh, wow. that short film okay. was never supposed to be released. It was just an experiment, like a personal experiment. Can I do this? Oh, wow. And I did it and I showed it to a couple of filmmakers and they're like, this is good, mm. put it out there. And I did, and next thing I heard, I got nominated. Wow. And I was so sure I wasn't going to win that I didn't even go for the awards. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was, I was filming in Calabar at the time. Hmm. So I was like, why am I wasting money traveling to Lagos for something I'm not going to win? So I was just wow. there in the hotel room and my, I left my phone somewhere. I was in someone else's room watching a movie. By the time I came back, it was buzzing off the chain. Um, Wale Ojo was calling me like, bruh, 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 I am holding your award. Where the hell are you? So it was, wow. it was really nice. Wow. Yeah, wow. so now, um, Baj, uh, between 2010 and 2019, a lot has been going on. Yeah. However, you were probably one of the very lucky few who started uh, their career on a high note, so to speak. Yes, yeah. it might have been a small role, 
Uh, but that platform uh, that Tinsel gave you back in 2010, of course, it must have been an edge, hasn't it been? Not even, not even a little bit. Really? <laughs> not really? Even, not even a teeny tiny. It did absolutely nothing, actually. The only thing it did for me, the thing it did for me was personal, which to me was more important than any edge it could have given me. Because at that point in my life, I was still working. I was still doing 95. I just took okay. like a leave to do... Tinsel. So I was still trying to find out what I wanted to do with my life. Mm. You know, I didn't think, even at that time, I didn't think your life is supposed to be what you should be told it should be. Mm. You should make that decision yourself. So I was trying out a lot of things. I was, I tried acting. I tried, I even tried TV presenting. Wow. I tried modeling. I, <laughs> I did some true. engineering jobs. But job you're still doing TV it. presenting. Mm. I've not done it in a while. Oh. Yeah, but, yeah. So I tried a lot of things. And then I tried, um, then Tinsel came. Mm -hmm. I did, I think, just two episodes. And it made, I knew that there, this is it. Okay, this so is, that was the turning point. Yeah, exactly. But now you've worked with the likes of RMD yeah. in Hush. That, that must feel really good to at least be on the same platform as, as people like that. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, I still remember when I first got the role. I almost turned it down oh, wow. because okay. I wanted to do something else. I was really invested in something else. Okay. And they also called me like, are you sure you want to turn this down? Because you're playing lead oh, wow. and you're RMD's son. Mm. I'm like, can I call you back? <laughs> <laughs> so I was back calling. Can I just, just, give me, just, give me like two, just give me like two minutes. <laughs> See, like two, I'll, I'll be right back. And yeah, then so you that, called the phone and then yeah, what happened? You I, screamed. I called back and, and, and had it. Like, you screamed. And then you called yeah, back. Yeah, I was excited. I was, I was super excited. I was super excited. <laughs> but I was too worried about the other thing because yeah. I had already, we had done readings, we had done fittings, we, they, they had set the time and everything. I was pretty much almost like getting ready to shoot. So it's, and I didn't want to start my career being the kind of person that isn't a man of his word. Yeah. You know, I was raised to be that kind of person, but this was such a big opportunity. So I had to talk to her. Someone on the project had to call her mm. to talk to her. I said, this is what's going on. Mm. You need to forgive him and allow him wow. to do this. So, wow. she, so you weren't able to do that other project? Yeah, no. I couldn't, I couldn't. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she, she forgave me, I but, think. But this is RMD <laughs> now. Yeah, but you know, the cost hard. of production, now mm. that you're a producer yourself, yeah. you can imagine how much that would have cost her, your decision. Yeah, yeah, that's why, that's why I didn't um, do it like, hey, uh, babe, I'm no more doing your stuff. Ah, yeah, I didn't. I, yeah. I, I, I understood that even at that at that time. So I, I, I made it a one on one. Like, can, can we talk? Where are you? Let me come and meet you. Mm. I went to meet her. Which was, we we spoke. So it was like a one on one conversation. And she was upset. She was really really upset. But when she saw what was going on, she saw that it wasn't the. Uh, she, I'm just shoving her to the side for something. It was something. Mm. She's like, okay. She, okay. she, she's now, uh, when, when we take a look at your journey, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like a case of a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> now, which one would you say you have really mastered? Like the one that none. not just mastered. Oh, you're still no, the, not the, the master of none. <laughs> but which one would you like to master? Um, acting and filmmaking. Uh, acting that's, and that's filmmaking. What I'm, that's why I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I okay. dream about it. I wake up with it. It's it's my entire life. So it's definitely that one. It's just. It hasn't gotten to a stage in Nigeria where you can really just do only that. Yeah. You know, so you have to also have side hustles, mm -hmm. make money from other avenues. So it's good to just diversify. Mm -hmm. But if it was just left to me, mm -hmm. it's just the two of them. All right. Now, I, I can remember um, a soldier's story, that oh, particular okay, yes. movie. Now, yeah, you're probably thinking, I watch a lot of Nigerian TV. <laughs> but that particular movie, there was a whole big launch and premiere yes, and it everything. Yes, it was really, big. really yeah. huge. Yeah. And it was one of the films that I, I actually had to commend them that they really put it together well. But it must have been very grueling. Yes, it uh, was. Because of, you know, the training they must have put you guys yes, through. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, they had um, an army guy on set. An army? Yeah, to teach us how to hold the gun and everything. Oh, my gosh. I didn't make that assumption that should we watch action films, we know how to hold the gun. They yeah. don't want to, <laughs> want to risk that. Wow. And I had to do the training first, because if, you, if you've seen the film, yeah. I'm literally the first person you see yeah. when the film starts. So, <laughs> so they, I, we started like that. So right down there, they, were, um, they, they put me in the, in the, in the costume and everything, yeah, yeah. then they brought the guns, then the guy was showing us how to hold it, yeah. when, when I want to do this, what this sign means, what this sign means, okay. all those things. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and right there on set, like if I do something on improv that <laughs> is out of character, I'm like, ah, you can't do that. You can't oh, do yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Okay, was cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you know what? That, yeah. uh, so people can have an idea of what you're like on mm. screen. Mm. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, one of your movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Rashidat. Guy, that baby's hot now. Jesus. Ah, you be mad though. I don't know say you get this guy level low. 
What are your low key pain? That's a bad bitch. Oh, more just when I want to study, come on. Oh my goodness, we, we, we all need friends like that. Yes. Oh, that then we need to be the kind of friends that actually listen to friends yes. like that. Yes. Please, yes, let's uh, <laughs> let's head over to the kitchen. Yes, now. We the should. chef has been hard at work. Yomi has been assisting her <laughs> really well. Please, let's go okay. have a bite. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Um, so please, there's. Quite a bit has been happening in the kitchen. Welcome Please. to the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you uh, Don't even say your means, uh, your means um, kitchen here. <laughs> chef Yede. Yeah, Thanks. Chef Yede is, uh, has it's been good. hard at work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made a chicken salad with a twist. Mm -hmm. Just the okay. way, you know. Yeah. So this I made I good. made this one, this one that looks funny. Can I have <laughs> the one she made? <laughs> <laughs> no offense, no offense. How are you doing? No <laughs> okay, so uh, Chef Yede, talk to us about what you did here mm. and how it all came we, together. Can I dig in? Go ahead. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so we have a chicken salad that we marinated with paprika, um, salt, mm. garlic, and some chili. And then the lettuce, the um, cabbage, some boiled pasta and olive oil mm. and salt, and then carrots and some then we, cherry tomatoes. We, remember we made that sauce. That right? sauce, the, the vinegar sauce, yeah. where really, like, my assistant like chef. Mouth. No, <laughs> for real, for real. For real, man, I cleaned this table. Look, so we did the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think? It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Still eating. Mm -hmm. At good. least that's what we like to see. Yeah. Sometimes when they pause, you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. What's, uh, what's well this? done, Chef Yehide. What's that? That's pasta. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very so throw that on pasta. There. Yes, sir. Anyway, we have to start rounding off now. A uh, big thank you to our friends over at Homely NG for the kitchen access. Yes. yes. Indeed. Mm. Thanks so much for the support. And of course, thank you to everyone who tuned in today. We know you're always right there for us and we'll do our best to be right there for you again tomorrow morning. Yeah, Thank we're gonna you be for back. Watching. Thank ah. you. 6 a.m. yo. Well done. Thank right. you. Thanks, bye. Have a great day, yo. Bye.